All right, today we're going to be showing you how to install this wireless backup camera by FXT Technologies. It's going to be amazing because our bus is huge and it's really hard to back up. This is normally a very easy process if you have an RV or if you have a school bus with a DC outlet, like a cigarette lighter type thing. Our bus is pretty old, so it doesn't have that which means this is gonna be a little bit harder than we would have liked. So basically we have to first install the DC outlet and then we can use this and then it should be fairly straightforward to plug and play. So what are we doing? There's lots of wires in your school bus. <laughs> Some of them have power all the time. Some of them only have power when the key is on. We are going to be installing these 12 volt outlets. Got them off Amazon, they're like $10. They're waterproof, marine grade. We're going to be installing these and I do not want them to have power all the time. The reason being, if I plug something in and I forget about it, it's going to drain my battery and then I won't be able to start the car. So instead, I'm looking for a circuit that only has power when the key is on. One way to do that is to check your bus's fuse panel. Let's take a look. Alright, so this is our bus's fuse panel. You can crack this open. And what you got in here is a bunch of fuses. There's actually two of them. They all have different things, but luckily they're labeled. So if you look at this very intimidating schematic diagram, you can see that some say hot all the time and some say ignition feed. I'm gonna be looking for one that says ignition feed so that it's only hot during that time period. These are all numbered. And then there's another diagram that shows me which fuse corresponds to which number. So not only do you have to see which one has power all the time or just when it's running. You also have to see if there's actually a fuse in there because like our bus has a spot that says radio. We don't have a radio. So there's no fuse in here, which means it wouldn't have power no matter what. So we're gonna check this. We're gonna see which circuit we want and then we're gonna test it inside just to make sure. So now we're back inside. We checked the fuse panel. Um, I have found a few wires that are alive all the time and what I certainly recommend is that you actually test whether or not there's a voltage going through it. So this you can get Amazon, Walmart, wherever. It's a voltmeter, also an amp meter. If you're doing this, I highly recommend you just try and stick to the volt readings because it's a lot safer than trying to measure current because you don't know what kind of current you're going to get and that's more dangerous. Voltmeter, less dangerous. So if you're checking the voltage and you touch the wrong spot, it's just gonna show zero. If you touch the right spot, it's gonna show your voltage. Not a big deal. It's what you wanna do. They also sell these little kits for cars sometimes that help you check whether or not there's a voltage. There's like a tiny little light in here. It'll glow if you are getting the voltage, if it's within the range, and it will not glow if you don't. You have to connect the ground on this end um, same with this, you have a black for the ground, a red for the voltage, and again, pretty safe. If you mixed them up, it would just show you a negative voltage. So, pretty cool. What does that mean for us? I've decided I'm going to look into this. This was our switch for the manual or automatic door. We don't have an automatic or manual door anymore because we took it apart. So now this is just an electrical circuit doing nothing. There's a switch here. It either closes the circuit allowing power or breaks the circuit so there's no power. But I need to see whether or not this has power all the time or just when it's turned on. So let's check. So first I'm going to check my red here. So I'm touching the red terminal and then I need to touch a ground spot on my, my vehicle. That is anywhere connected to the frame. So if I touch paint, unfortunately that doesn't work. But if you touch a hole that is bare metal, it should work. So if I touch a hole here, I am seeing zero volts, nothing. If I make sure, there's actually some other wires grounded over here, so I'm just double checking off of those. Also zero. That might just be because the switch is off. So I'm gonna flip the switch on. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna touch the red, the hot terminal. I'm gonna touch the ground. Still zero, nothing. Now I'm going to flip the key, turn on the bus, and see if we still have a zero volt or not. Key is on. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to touch the red. I'm going to touch the ground point. So now you're seeing that there's a positive voltage. It's not zero. That means I do have electricity flowing through the circuit. If I flip the switch and I do the same thing, I'm going to get a zero because now there's zero voltage going there. 
And that's the whole point of the switch. So now I'm gonna flip the key off. I know there's no power going there. That means it's safe to cut, safe to do anything. If you wanna be extra safe, always recommend you can unplug the battery, disconnect the battery. So now pretty straightforward from here, all I'm gonna do is connect this wire here to this guy and it has an inline fuse in it already. It's 10 amps, but we're just gonna basically connect things to each other, that's it. So this is annoying, but in our bus, this is black and it's a hot wire. Normally, red is the hot wire, unless you're doing AC alternating current. This is not AC, this is DC, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna connect the red to here because that's what, which one has the fuse in it. The fuse has to go on the line actually getting the electricity, the positive. This is a ring terminal. I don't want that. I'm just gonna cut it. We are gonna strip the wire a little bit. Like that, bang. And now I am going to, I'm gonna connect into here. There's two ways you can connect multiple wires together. Because we're connecting three, we're gonna connect these two and another one. I love these little things. You just like flip them open, stick the wire in and then close it. Amazing. But these are not waterproof, so don't do it outside. I'm just gonna stick this guy in here. And now it's pretty tight. I am gonna snip this guy. And I'm gonna strip it. And I'm gonna strip this guy. I'm just gonna stick them all into the same thing. And that's it. Now they're connected. Last step, I just like to tape it together so that everything's always nice and tight and the wires can't go anywhere. Can't bounce out. Electrical tape. I am just going to tape them all together. That's it. So that is step one. Step two is I need to ground the wire. We have a ring terminal here. And this is a spade terminal. This is just gonna connect to my outlet, wherever I put it. So this is gonna connect just to here. You're just gonna push to connect. And it already has a ring terminal on it. If you didn't have a ring terminal, I would tell you to put one on. All I'm gonna do is screw this down onto the bus somewhere and then we're done. We are grounding this wire and the entire bus chassis is a ground. I also know that any of this metal, once you get past the paint, is a ground because I can see other wires are screwed into it and therefore grounded to it. <laughs> so we're going to do exactly the same thing. You could potentially just reuse the same ground, but I'm just going to screw in a new hole and we're going to do that. So as long as this is touching the metal and my screw is touching the frame or the chassis somewhere, we should be good to go. It's one ground. We're going to put a, a self-tapping screw here. We're going to screw it in and that's all we need to do. Last step, if we had a nice dashboard, I would install this permanently, but we don't, so it's just gonna be floating for now. Last step, you just take this spade terminal, negative to negative, positive to positive. And now we should have a functional 12 volt outlet but only when the car is running and my switch is on. So this is actually kind of neat. I can shut this off if I want to, um, even if the car is running. So, you know, engineering. <laughs> Let's try this out. So now we're gonna see if Jesse's phone can charge, if this works. So this is our outlet. We have a 12 volt charger, just like you would plug into your car. I'm gonna plug this in. It is not charging because the key's on. So let's flip the key. It is still not charging because the switch is off. But if I flip the switch. There we go. There we go. So now this isn't our air door. This is our outlet charger. Let's check out what's in our wireless backup camera kit. So we open it up. We have a very nice seven inch display. So this is actually gonna like show us what's behind us. It works really well. It's supposed to work at night too. We're really excited to see how that goes. This is gonna end up getting mounted up here, which is why we installed that little outlet. We got the instruction manual here, and this is some mounting hardware. We have our actual camera. 
So this is what's gonna go on the back of the bus, showing us where we need to look. Some wiring, so this is our DC outlet charger. This connects right to the display. And then this is our camera charger. So this will get power from our reverse lights. So whenever the reverse lights are on, this will get power as well. Other than that, we have some mounting brackets here. So this will hold up the screen. And then another mounting bracket for the camera. And then the only other thing in here are these antennas. And that's because these are wireless. When you live in an RV or a bus, you know wiring is really annoying, even though I've just shown you how easy it is. Anyways, wiring's really annoying, and if you had to run a wire all the way from the front where you're sitting to the back where your camera is, that would be pretty annoying. These are designed to be wireless, so we can just install this in the back, install one in the front, there's no wire between the two. And all we have to do is screw in these little antennas and then they're gonna to talk to each other. We're gonna get this wired into our reverse lights and then we are gonna be good to go. We're getting ready to install the camera portion of our backup camera. Usually you can just wire it into your reverse lights and that way when you put it in reverse, they get power, this will turn on. We are gonna do something a little different. Since there's lights already up here, these are called clearing lights. We are gonna just use that for our power source. So we'll have to turn on our clearing lights to see in reverse, but that shouldn't really cause any issue for us. So we're gonna take this off, we're gonna to get to the wire, we're gonna splice it in. We are gonna use the clearing lights, but after we investigated this a little bit, this wire is actually accessible from the inside of the bus, so we can see it there. We've now identified which one it is, which helps us know which circuit we need to be on. We're gonna put this back on here, and then we are gonna mount our camera just above it, which should allow us to see a nice uh, view without getting in the way of this light. That should be perfect. We are drilling two more holes now because I need to put in some screws that will allow me to secure my mounting bracket. Okay, next we are gonna mount our camera. Since it's going through a metal hole, I'm gonna wrap it a little bit extra in electrical tape to protect the wire from the metal. We're gonna feed our wire through and then just mount this using some of the screws that it came with. Back here in our bus, you can see there's some wires. These actually correspond to those clearing lights we talked about. So we just need to get into the same type of power source as they have. So we need to connect the hot to the hot and the minus to the minus. So this is pretty easy. This you just plug in. This kit made it pretty easy. Um, it came with this little adapter. This allows you to connect your, my red wire here into an already existing wire. So you're gonna take one wire, cut it, and then add the third in, crimp them all together. Now you have power. to connect to the bus somewhere. We just had to attach a ground wire, so the whole bus chassis is a ground. We drill the self-tapping screw in with a ring terminal that grounds the backup camera, and now we should be good to go. Let's see if it works.
I'm briefly going to go over some of the settings on our backup cam. It does come with instructions that are very straightforward, but just so you know what this backup cam can do, if you go into the menu, um, you'll see eight different little boxes. The first one is pairing, so uh, your device is already paired coming straight out of the factory. If you need to replace one part or the other, this is what you'll use to repair them. The second option is picture. You can change the brightness, the contrast, etc. The next one is how you want this to display. So if you want it, um, you could flip it upside down, you could switch it left and right, the mirrored. So this is you're, you choosing how you want it displayed on your screen. One reason you might want to use this feature is if you want to orient the screen in a different way, then you can flip so that you are seeing the back as it should be. The next option is for mode. So with this monitor, you can actually connect up to four different cameras. And so mode will allow you to have a display of two of the cameras on at a time, three, four, so you get to choose how you want the layout to be. Same thing with cam setup. You can go in here to set up your four different displays or your different screens. The next one is system. So this is all of your settings. Um, you can set the day and time, you can choose your language, you can choose if the, you want this to auto dim after a certain amount of time, and if you want to reset all of the settings back to default. And then the last two have to do with recording. So you can enter in a SIM card into this monitor and record. Um, so some of the settings in here you can choose to or overwrite your SIM card if it fills up or um, when you want to play, etc. So all the settings you want for recording are in these last two. One useful thing about recording is that while you're driving, if you want to record just in case you get in an accident or something, it's like a dash cam, that can be very useful. And if you had more than one camera, you could place them on different angles of your vehicle. So you could have one on the front, one in the back, you could even have some on the sides, really just to capture all around your vehicle. So I know that was a really quick overview of the settings. If you end up getting this backup cam, the, the instructions are very clear, so you can have a lot more detail there. As you can see, it's very dark out. We have come to this dark back corner of the parking lot, um, and there's no lights on in the back. So this is just the footage from the camera super bright. You can see when I actually push the brakes it gets brighter because that's when I actually have lights on. But this is just the camera doing the work. It's really bright. This is great. This will be really good for backing up anytime we're in the night and it's really dark and we need to see back there. Overall impressions of the backup camera are pretty good. So from an installation perspective, it was very easy to install a couple wires, a couple of screws, and it was really great that we did not have to connect the backup camera portion all the way to the front where the monitor is. The Bluetooth feature is really easy to use. That's great. We were also very impressed with how well the night vision camera worked. So we were in a very dark spot. You could see crystal clearly behind you. That's really great when we get to some really remote spots. There's never any lights around. We also really appreciate the size of the screen in the front. It makes it really easy to see, and when you're backing up a vehicle this big, it's important to make sure you can see what you're doing. And we also think that the customizability of the actual unit is really great. Um, we like that you could add more cameras. We like that you could record. It's something we might look into in the future so that we can see all around us. The only thing we noticed that we didn't love is that after it rained quite hard, we noticed the camera was a little bit foggy, and then there left some spots on the lens. That did go away on its own after a few days, but for that one short period of time, it was a little bit unclear in the camera portion. Overall, we really like the product and we are super happy that we have a backup cam. If you thought this video was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more build videos. And once we're done building our bus, you can follow along on our adventures throughout the US. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.